Poland 1, Austria 3. And this was the signature Marco Arnatovic game. 35 year old, just playing with the kids and showing you your experience. From four Lazima and the Funky. Hey, this boy was just he was he was really good. Before we start, obviously, guys, remember the revolution shall be televised. All of you guys in Kenya, my people in Kenya, my brothers and sisters in Kenya. This one counts. This one counts. Don't be left out. Yeah, so Austria beat Poland 3-1. Um, again, as I say, this was the Marko Anatovic game. He started in place of Gregorich. I guess that's his name. Gregorich. Yes, that's his name. Um, and then in front of him was, sorry, behind him was Sabitza Lima and Bomgatna. Sabitza was really, really, really getting up front. Like, he plays a very interesting role. He's not really a striker. He's not really a midfielder. He's just always there <laughs> when you need him anywhere in the second, third, and the final third, you know. He's, he's, he's a solid, 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 solid footballer. Just an all-round footballer. Um, yeah, first goal obviously came through. Um, Oster scored first. There was a throw-in from Mwene. Shout out to Mwene. Uh, Keenan says that Mwene has some kisi blood in him. He must be Kenyan. I don't know how true that is. You guys can let me know in the comment section. Um, yeah, so you throw in the ball, somehow comes back to him. All the, the center backs were all ahead. Um, and then when the ball comes back, he manages to go to the, I want to say baseline. I've watched too much basketball lately. Yeah, he goes to like the byline and then crosses in, beautiful cross, and Trauna meets, meets it with a beautiful header, past Wojciech, Shays need to make it 1-0. And yeah, at that point, it was just like, Austria really started well. And I was like, yo, this team, it, it didn't look like the same team that played France. The one that played France looked a bit timid, looked a bit um, a bit, a bit concerned that Mbappe is playing against them, which is understandable. It's Kylian. Um, But yeah, they started quite strong. The thing is, they, there was a spell where they just decided to take their foot off the gas. They're not pressing as high anymore. I think it was just... I don't know what it is. Was it hot? Like, it's just energy sapping at some point. Like, they just looked short. Um, like, short, short of energy. So they looked short as H-O-T. English is hard, guys. Um, yeah, then uh, Poland just slowly kept on coming into the game. So one way you can always tell is if the press is not pressing as high and the Polish are just creeping up, creeping up, and they're slowly getting the ball in more dangerous areas. And that is how they managed to, go the, to get their equalizer. It was from Christoph Piontek, who was on for Lewandowski. Actually, no, Buksha is on for Lewandowski, but then they decided to play with a front two of Piontek and Buksha, which I think uh, from like the, the first 10 minutes or so didn't work too well, but then there was a spell there around the 30 minute mark, like like 20 to like almost half time, where it looked like they were really good. They were really putting the team under pressure, you know? Um, Austria, that is. Um, Austria were just going through the paces. Like they didn't, they were not really creating much. They were not, like they were just there at some point. So I, again, as I said, I don't know whether it's just energy, it's age. Because if you look at the team also, it's not the youngest team ever, you know. And then at halftime, both, both, both coaches made changes. Uh, Piotrowski came on for Morde, for Moda. And then Grilich, Grilich, not Grilich, Grilich came on for Kevin Vima for Austria. Um... And uh, Trona had to come off as well for Danso had to came on for him. So, yeah, they made changes here and there just to see, check the flow of the game. And then, um, again, from halftime, although it was like 60 minutes, it was just like a back and forth. It wasn't really that many great chances. Then um, around the 60th minute, there was an injury to, I can't I forget who, uh, Buksha. Buksha actually had an injury. And he came on in the 68th minute. Actually, even Piontek went off and Swidaski came on. Um, what was interesting is even before these subs were made, before the injury happened, he was warming up. So I think it was already in the game plan that they were going to bring him in for at least 30 minutes or give him 30 minutes um, on the field. So he came on uh, within a few minutes, collects a yellow card from a nasty, um, this is Lewandowski, from a nasty like um, elbow, um, caught someone on the face. I can't remember who it was. And then, yeah, basically two minutes later, Bomgartner goes, they go to the other side and Bomgartner just manages to get on the score sheet. Um, I had my notes here. I'm trying to remember. Oh, it's on the other side. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Um, uh, 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 
Um, yeah. Oh, so the Bumgartner goal actually came from the ball went to the wing. I forget who it was on the wing. I will tell you right now who it was on the wing. It was, uh, I believe it was Grealish. Um, I believe it was Grealish. Anyway, whoever it was, <laughs> they put in a nice cross. The, the cross was just so nice coming to the the ground, and then that is why you see Arnautovic and his and his and his wit. Knowing very well that um, Bumgartner is behind him, he pretended he's going to take the ball and go with it, and he just dummies goes over the ball. Ball goes straight to Bumgartner, and then Arnautovic continues with continues with his run. So now Bumgartner has two options: you either shoot or you give it back to um, Arnautovic, which is such such just smart play, right? Because you're giving you're not only giving your teammate, letting your teammate have the ball in a great position, you're giving him options, you know. Very good options at that, knowing he's a good shooter. And by you going wide, you really open up. Um, like when he ran in, he just didn't run. He ran into a position where the defender has to think about him, which means the defenders can't, other defenders can't just close him down. And yeah, just great shot, um, making it 2-1. And at this point, it was like alarm bells for Poland, right? Because, you know, when Lewandowski comes in, it's like, okay, our talisman is in, but then... Then they concede almost immediately. Then it's like, oh, now he has to be our savior, you know. Um, and when he came on, it was more like he could he could be the one to win us all three points. And then all of a sudden, now he has to be our savior. So, uh, yeah, then that happened. A few minutes later, um, Bomkarten at this point, like his confidence was just through the roof. Then there was a part where he was just, he, he drove on the right side. He had the ball. He remember he was driving on the right side. And then um, pass to Vima, and Vima has a rasping shot. The thing about Austria is the chances they were creating, even the moment at which whoever, whoever the person is going to shoot, he has options. So that just tells me they know how to position themselves. They know how to get into positions where they know, to, they know how to be disciplined in their positions, right, up front. They know how to be in positions which it occupies defenders in those areas of the field. Very, very smart play. And every single time they were shooting, the shooter had two options, um, either to pass or to shoot. In this case, Kevin Vima had the option to pass to two people who are also open or him to shoot. But the save from Chesney was really good. It was just fingertip save. When I say fingertip, I mean fingertip. It was a very good fingertip save. Then three minutes later, Sabitza is in on goal. I can't even remember what happened um, that just before that. I don't know if they lost the ball or whatever. I can't remember. But... Um, Again, I'm doing I'm doing this post match in the evening. I watched the game like four hours ago before the before the Netherlands game. So I'm trying to remember what happened. But I have notes. I don't think I wrote that down. But yeah. Um all I remember is Sabitzer running through, then he got tackled by Chesney. It was pretty obvious. It was a penalty. Even when he was given the yellow card, Chesney just taps the referee and he's like, Yeah, yeah, cool. Um and yeah. Anatovic steps up, steps up the penalty, slots it in. That was the fight, his last kick of the game. And at 3-1, things were safe. This was now 12 minutes to go. Later in the game, about the 85th minute, Porsche had a chance. Again, Shevzny, um had a good save. So, And just like that, that's how the game ended. Like There was nothing much to write about after that. Like The game was just, yeah, it was just one of those ones. So as... Um, at the moment, Poland are actually in last place. They have zero points. Austria have three points. Even if Poland win their next game, because they've just lost to Austria, they've lost a head-to-head, so they can't overtake them. So that means Poland is the first team out of this tournament. And um, Netherlands and France on four points at the top of Group D. <sighs> next games, um, the Netherlands going up against... Austria and then France taking on Poland. At this point, it's just for them. This this game is just for vibes, uh, Poland and just be spoilers, be spoilers. Like that that is the best they can do at this moment. But yeah, interesting game, interesting game. Good results, good result for Austria. Very disappointing for Poland. This is probably the end of an era for them as well. Like Lewandowski is, I think, turning thirty six soon. So. Um, I don't know if he'll even be fit enough to be available for the next World Cup. He's getting some really, really um, dodgy muscular injuries. Dodgy in the sense of, let me say costly, costly uh, muscular injuries, and he's missing quite a bit of games for his national team and for his club. So, yeah, 
that is how the game ended. Poland 1, Austria 3. Tomorrow, we are doing Turkey versus... Um, Turkey versus Portugal at 7 p.m. So make sure you tune in. Uh, we'll be live on TikTok and you guys can come there at any time. You're welcome. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace.